here. Okay. So, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, for the record, I believe that you are you are all adults sitting in a library science class. Um, <laughs> but irrespective of library science, today we are going to be learning about how to play the Star Wars role playing game, specifically how to use the dice. Because, as you might have noticed, these are very unique dice. Um, so, to start with, actually, let's go back for a second here. Who here has ever played a role-playing game before? You, you, uh, what have you guys played? I used to play D&D &D all the time in okay. I Perfect. Talisman, is that role-playing or no? That's more of like a card. That, that's more of a card game, but it, that's that's still applicable. That's as close as I've gotten. Okay, <laughs> but I do I do see that half of our class does not has not in fact played a role playing game before. So let me let me rephrase the question: Have you ever played pretend? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is probably when you were little, though. You know, I'm not judging if you like like to play pretend as an adult. Obviously, I do. Otherwise, I would not be giving this presentation. Um, <coughs> But when you play pretend, and you are generally pretending you're another person, there are kind of, in your mind at least, you come up with rules, right? You know, uh, like when you're little and you're playing with your friends, uh, if, anyone, if anyone can remember, um, you know, what are some of the rules that you guys came up with? Or maybe imposed upon your friends? I remember being very bossy about when it was nighttime in pretend so that we could pretend to take a nap. Okay, very good. I was good. actually very tired. Anybody else? It's fine if you don't, I understand. That the tree in the middle of the yard was safe. That's a good mm. one. Yes, boundaries. I was always the girl, my sister was always the boy. I don't care what we do. <laughs> Excellent, all right. The character dynamics. So, this is a very highly, well, sort of technical uh, definition of role-playing game that identifies a few other key vocabulary words for role-playing games. Um, but essentially, a role-playing game is when you pretend you're someone else. And you and your friends, when playing together, have a group of shared rules that determine how you move forward, how you play, and then pretty much there's one person who's responsible for, so basically everyone but one person is responsible for a single character, and then one person is responsible for all the other characters, and also the world and the environment, that sort of thing. Um, so, the other half of this is Star Wars. Who here has seen Star Wars? Yes. This is, have, have you actually not? Or? I've actually not seen Star Wars. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ever? I've seen Ever. nothing. Oh. I know, so, no, I know. But I but know. You, you know yeah. of Star Wars. What? Oh, of course. Yes. And you can you can probably you could probably uh, name a few characters, Absolutely. a few ideas yeah. from Star Wars. Because, you know, that's pop culture. That is yeah. Star Wars is a <laughs> cornerstone of American shared experience. Uh, also worldwide, but you know, for tonight we're gonna be focusing on the American experience. Um, essentially by mixing Star Wars and role-playing games together, you can create a very solid interaction between people who might not have ever met, who might not have you know, experienced anything together before, because you can tap into that group dynamic of people have played pretend before, at some point in their lives, generally, and people at least know Star Wars, even if they've never been a part of what might be considered a Star Wars fan. Um, so that brings us to today's subject. The Star Wars role-playing game has been around about as long as role-playing games have been around, ever since Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson, uh, as well as others, but I'm afraid their names escape me at the moment. Um, they created Dungeons and Dragons after wargaming, which wargaming is using, basically you control entire armies and you compete with each other. And D&D came out originally of basically them saying, well that's cool, but what if you only controlled a few people. What if you only controlled one person? What if you controlled one person, your friend controlled another person, and you had to fight this war together? Gradually that built up and became D&D. Um, just a couple of years after D&D was published and the role-playing game craze hit the market hard, a Star Wars role-playing game was created because people like money. And also people like Star Wars and they love to pretend to play Star Wars. 
Um, the game has gone through several iterations, but perhaps the most unique part about the most recent version is the dice. So if you could all take a moment, study the dice in front of you, you'll notice that they are different colors, they are different shapes, but they do have some repeated symbols on them, and we're going to get to those. But going down the list, we have green ability dice, purple difficulty dice, yellow proficiency dice, red challenge dice, blue boost dice, black setback dice, white force dice. It all might seem very overwhelming, but I promise that this, this is going to be a very simple and fun lesson. Um, so judging by the names, uh, what can we guess about what some of these dice are? Feel free to sing out if you have an idea. I think the ability dice probably is like, what abilities can you have? I don't know if it's like, well, I guess Star Wars isn't really magical. Well, there are certainly but, aspects of magic, okay. um, and that is a very good guess. Um, ability dice, in fact, represent your represent a character's raw talent to complete a skill. Basically, you know what they have inside themselves in order to um, basically accomplish a task to have an ability. Um, based on that, uh, what can we guess a proficiency die is? Yes? How good you are at your ability. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Proficiency dice for equipment are come together when you have a character's innate skill and they're training in a skill. When you have that overlap, that is represented by a proficiency die. How about a difficulty die? Is it maybe how difficult the challenge is? Or exactly. Kind of like proficiency to ability kind of difficult? Yes. So, for example, you know, if you have high strength, you might have three or four ability dice. Ch difficulty dice have that similar um, mm -hmm. aspect where how many dice you have determines how difficult the task in front of you is. From, e from an easy difficulty, which is, a sing which is a single purple, all the way up to what's called formidable difficulty, which is five. Uh, so then what might a challenge die be? Yes. Something that you are facing within, a, within the context of the game. So like, it's not necessarily how difficult something is, but I don't know if these symbols represent a particular challenge, so. They do, in fact, and you are dead on. So a challenge die is basically, like we mentioned before, an ability, a proficiency die is kind of an upgraded version of an ability die. A challenge die is an upgraded version of difficulty. This is, you know, more than simply climbing a mountain, it's also raining. It is also, you know, you have something attacking you. You know, you are pressed for time, you have to get up there in 30 seconds or, or the princess is going to fall to the volcano. Something like that. We additionally have boost dice which are, and setback dice, both are largely environmental, mostly meant um, in order to uh, simulate outside factors that might be an issue as you move forward. And we have the force die. Now, we're not going to focus very much on the force die tonight, um, primarily because that it, it's its own can of worms with mechanics, um, and <coughs> I'm trying to get you guys interested in this game and not, you know, shatter your minds. So. But the important thing is that the force side rep can represent a character's um, ability to access the force. And as you might look at it, you'll see little white pips, little black pips. That is the light side of the force and the dark side of the force, respectively. Now these symbols. So you'll notice that each die has a symbol. These are both positive and negative symbols. Uh, so success, do you succeed at your task or not? If you have su any success symbols left over when you roll the dice, you will succeed at the task. However, success is canceled out by failure. So that's how this dice mechanic works, is you take one symbol, compare it to the next. When you roll your dice, you'll have an X number of successes, Y number of failures. You compare them based on what you have left after they eliminate each other. That determines how your skill, or how your skill check, as it's defined, um, is carried out. So this is, this is simply, um, whether you succeed or whether you fail, whether you complete the task in front of you or whether you don't. Uh, you'll notice success is cumulative, so if you have more successes, you accomplish the task better. Failure is just binary. So if you fail, even if you have five failure symbols, it's fine, you just fail. You don't fail any harder than you would have previously. 
there are also additional symbols. So advantages had a positive outcome. Threat represented a negative outcome. Essentially, you can have, say you fail a roll, but you have two advantages. That means you didn't complete the task in front of you, but nevertheless, through trying, or through some environmental factor, something good still happen. Um, just like success and failure, these two cancel each other out, and whatever's left over determines what's on the roll. Finally, we have the ultimate positive and negative symbols. The top one is a triumph. That means something amazing just happened. You know, you just found a new hyperspace lane. You just defeated your foe in a single blow. Something incredible. A triumph cannot be canceled out. Whenever you roll one, something great just happened. The flip side is the despair. Whenever you roll that, something really bad just happened. The floor just dropped out from underneath you. Your ship just turned off in the middle of space. Something <coughs> horrible. And again, it cannot be canceled out. So you could possibly, in the exercise we're going to be doing in just a minute, uh, have a triumph and a despair on your roll, which will make for some very interesting storytelling. But it's also worth noting that the triumph and the despair both count as a success and failure symbol, respectively, and those can be canceled out by normal means. So if you end up with just a triumph, you can, it still counts as a success, but if you had one extra failure, it's going to cancel out that success. But don't worry too much about remembering all this, because here's a helpful guide in order to do this uh, exercise. So our two key vocabulary points for this exercise, adjudication is simply, what did you roll? Do you have more successes than failures? Do you have more threats than advantages? That sort of thing. Interpretation is going to be a creative act. You're going to be using your dice roll in order to figure out how the story moves forward. And now is when I invite you guys to open up those little pieces of paper that I gave you. If you could pair off so that you can be a resource to each other while you are trying to um, do this. Essentially, each of you has a scenario. You will read your scenario. You can read it to your partner. Um, roll the dice. See what, see what you come up with. And then try to think of a creative way that the story might move forward based on your die, based on your die roll. Imagine that you are your character and you have to accomplish these tasks. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to get that done. Yes, okay, so to the part of the agenda training, the master has instructed me to scale 50 foot rockets that are the place of blue stones and roots jutting out of the side. Halfway up, I discover I've encouraged my rock falcon's test when the mother bird begins to attack me. I can make an athletics check to pick up the pace and escape the bird's right. relentless packing before it meets the huge group of balls. I'll just like right out of my sight. Yep. And so basically, when, you, when you've read, what you're going to do is you're just going to take that big handful of dice and roll them. Remember, we're not focusing on the force die, so feel free to roll it, but you're not going to worry about what's on. Oh, I failed. <laughs> I failed hard. I failed hard. What is the blank? Just a blank. Blank just means nothing. So, like, okay, kind so of a little, but no, I, I failed. I super failed. Although, is that good, though? Because that's a, like, right. awesome um, that's, so yeah, success. It, it looks like basically you failed with one advantage. advantage. Ooh, so I failed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, oh, right. but, but here. I have made friends yeah, with awesome, the Rock Falcon, the and he then flies um, me to one. my oh, yeah. Jedi Master, and I look super oh, awesome. Oh, so then I have this. Yeah. All right. Um, I have no idea. Okay. What were the, what were the uh, colors again? So the colors are um, basically green and yellow are good. Oops. Green and yellow are good, purple and red are bad, and blue and black offer environment. Green is good. So you want to compare some of Right, okay. which is oh, hard awesome. oh, you also and, failed. Uh, another but awesome. A little ha you have two happy so those, guys. Got, so those, those cancel. Two stars on that. And, and then, then that, oh wait, what's roll that? That's, that's, a bad, that's, the, that's, that's a bad. That's the These are bad. So you compare the symbol. So oh, on this, so that this oh, you have success and okay. so yeah, you have so a failure so, and threat. So that cancels cancel those two out. And then well, you have my ship. Success. You have three successes and one failure, so you can cancel those two out. Blank. blank is fine, blank means nothing.
Oh, right. Shout out. What about me? Okay, yes. Super hurt. How did you die? Like, how? I feel like I just died. So these two, you know what I did? No, I didn't. Yes, because that's an advantage in the first place. cancel each other out. But. It's so still the attack, so there was a piece yes. that I was able to hide yeah. under. There you yeah. go. To protect myself Match from that. So yeah. that, that cancels out yeah. that so part. Not just you, you, were just, you didn't succeed against the ion so story. You just survived. So yes. You charmed your way. This would be a really terrible thing. They go for the dark side of the forest with you. Yeah, so that's well, I think I'm going to the challenge. How do you think I was able to hide under that? All right, has everyone adjudicated their roles and come up with some creative storytelling? Yes. Oh, God. Anything anyone would like to share? Any particular victories? Yes. Um, so I had to uh, scale a 50-foot rock wall, um, but then I accidentally um, disturbed a rock falcon's nest, and the mother began to attack me. I did fail in my mission to scale the rock wall, but I did have a small success, which was that I befriended the rock falcon, and uh, she flew me back to my Jedi Master in safety. Excellent. It said that, or you? No, that was my. I interpreted. Okay. okay. Is that? Nice. I have a question. Yes. So like, this is gonna be stupid, but um, so you like in a game you would make these up. That's yep. how these work. On That's the what role playing. You. Yep. you Basically, okay. we'd all be sitting around a table. Uh, I would. You would tell me what you want to do. I would decide. You know, do you need to roll for that? If you do, how hard is it gonna be? And then what? And then you would decide, or we would decide together, what skill you would use in order to try and tackle that challenge. So what are the boundaries for something like that? Because couldn't someone get just so silly with, like, I mean, oh, they're yeah. just, oh. <laughs> this, is not, like, like, this is not this a serious a, activity. Like, if someone's like, really just like, it, you know, it, yeah, it no. doesn't work, like, is there a, okay, so, no, so is, kind of veto? A, <laughs> yes, there, there is a little, there is, some, there is a little bit of veto, like, you okay. know, if I, if, you know, they say, oh, I want to, um, you know, if someone came up to me and said, like, you know, oh, I would, like, I want my character to fly up at the top of that tower and then jump down on, you know, the villain inside the courtyard or something, and I would say, well, do you have a jetpack? They would say, no. I would say, how are you going to fly? They would say, like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to aim my blaster at the ground. I'm going to jump and I'm just going to keep shooting myself and like, no. Okay. Is that that would not it has to be, be of the world. Exactly, it has to be of the world. And okay. when you play together, it's kind of a social contract almost that everyone's agreeing to play by like kind of unspoken rules of conducting yourself. Like you can get silly. I've had plenty of games that devolved into just like constant joking, like some people actively trying to make a situation worse. And it, as long as it's fun, it's fine. But when it stops being fun for someone, that's when it becomes an issue. Um, so why is this important? Well, part of our job as librarians is to reach out to those students and those teens that we serve and, you know, kids of all ages, in order to help them understand each other. And a lot of people who, a lot of kids who come into the library, you know, sometimes they're lonely, sometimes they're troubled. Um, and I, I can speak from personal experience that libraries and school and having a positive environment is how I got into this hobby. Because I had people who supported me and I had uh, librarians who cared about me and who got me in touch with the right group of friends. So, you know, even even when I was kind of, you know, your standard geeky loner kid, I didn't get into trouble because I was able to move into this. Um, but the other thing to, that I, I want to mention is that um, these games are designed to be fun on the base, like, in their most basic form. And if you look very closely at the dice, you will notice that if you were to count all the different symbols, you, you have more successes than you do failures. So on, a, on average, generally, you, know, you would succeed more often than you would fail. However, there are more threats than there are advantages. So for combined storytelling, usually a person getting what they want at a cost that they weren't expecting is a great way to move the story forward. Um, so I believe that's all that I've got for tonight. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you had a little bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah.